Hi everyone, welcome to the channel Bharat Jain D365. So today let's try to explore fixed assets data migration. So I will be covering the steps that's required to execute data migration for fixed assets and what are the templates that we'll be using to migrate the fixed assets. So before we start with that, so let's understand few key areas uh, when you do data migration. So obviously the data we move will be based on the cutoff date. So for example, I'll be considering May 31st as the cutoff date. So we consider all the balances as on May 31st. Once the data migration is completed, what are the key area that needs to be looked at from a fixed assets module perspective, right? So one is acquisition date. So I would want to know what is the original acquisition date of the fixed assets after migration placed in services from which date the fixed assets depreciation started to calculate depreciation remaining period. This is important because based on this, my remaining period will be posted uh, or the future depreciation will be posted in the new system. And obviously I would also want to know what is the original acquisition price and what is the accumulated depreciation posted so far. So these are the key area when you do migration, make sure it's properly captured. So with this in mind, now let's get started to do the actual migration. So what are the steps to do fixed assets migration? Step one is to create fixed assets master data. The entity used to uh, upload this is fixed assets v2. Let me enter entities. So this is the data management entities what I'm talking about. So to upload fixed assets master, we use fixed assets v2. So this is the fixed assets v2 template that I've already created. So when you update the fixed assets master data, we need to make sure we have fixed assets number, fixed assets group ID, name. These are the three important fields uh, that needs to be captured. Additionally, I've also taken the unit cost uh, type and quantity, but these three are must and should. Now, whenever fixed assets group, uh, we create fixed assets group with auto number, yes, but during the data migration, I would recommend to keep the fixed assets group ID, the auto number to no. This is because whatever the fixed assets number that is there in the legacy system, I would want to see the same fixed assets number in my new system. Mostly that would be the client requirement. And hence, I would recommend to keep auto number to no. Once the migration is completed, maybe we can enable auto number fixed assets to yes. So these are the data. So let's go and import this fixed assets master. So let me go to system. So before I start that, if you go to fixed assets, I don't have any created fixed assets currently. So you can see all the fixed assets would be blank. So let's go to data migration. So go to data management. So I want to import fixed assets master. So let's click on import. Let me give FA master to import the master name, add file. So select the source data format. I have the data in Excel. So I am selecting Excel here, entity name. So it should be fixed assets V2. Let me put it to contains fixed assets. So this is the entity name that I want to select. So I need to select the file. So let me close this file, save and close. So let's go back to system, upload and add. So let's quickly select what I want to so fix assets, my late. So the first one is FA master update. So let me select that. So once I add the file, a line will be created here. So once the line is created, then let me go and import it. So once the line added, so let me close this, select the line and click import now. So once the data is imported, now if I go back to my fixed assets module, let's refresh the screen. So you can see all the fixed assets are created. So let's take one sample fixed assets. So let's say go inside the fixed assets. So what are the data I need? I need fixed assets number, fixed assets group, fixed assets name. So these are the key data that I would verify. Additionally, I have unit cost, quantity and uh, time. So once fixed assets master is updated, the next step is to update fixed assets book. So the entity to update fixed assets book is fixed asset books v2. So what are the fields needs to be considered for fixed assets books? So if I go to book update, so here are the key fields that needs to be considered. So I would need fixed assets number because against which I'm updating book ID. So this is key because the 
write book needs to be mapped to the fixed assets. Acquisition date. So here, if you remember, the key field that we need to verify, one of the date is acquisition date. So make sure you get the right date that needs to be acquired. So here, uh, I had a lot of question. Should we post acquisition on 2019? Should we open that particular calendar and post on that particular date? So we don't need to do that. So I am posting transaction as on May 31st. So I would only open period for May 31st. I would post the transaction for May, but through this my book ID, the acquisition date would be 2019. So I would override the date from this particular field. And that is why acquisition date column is very important. So then I have acquisition method, method ID and description, acquisition price again. You can update this through transactions or just have it here as well. Uh, even if you skip this field, that's okay. So then we have depreciation convention. So another important field is depreciation remaining and depreciation periods. So initial depreciation period, that is 60 period and depreciation remaining. So this represents how many depreciation is already posted and what is the period that needs to be posted. So that's why depreciation remaining period is important and placed in service so this represents when did the depreciation calculation started so another important date that needs to be considered is placed in service so and service life so these are the key field that needs to be in, included in my fixed assets book so once all this data is in let me save this close so let's go to system and import fixed assets book so go to data management. Let me just come back. Click new. I want to import FA book. Then click add file. Excel entity name fixed assets book V2. So type fixed asset. So this is the one we need to select fixed assets book V2. Select that. Upload and add. Select the file fixed assets book update. So once the file is added, let me select this and click import now. So once the FA book is updated, now let's go back to fixed assets, refresh the screen. Now let's click on books. So now I can see book is updated. More importantly, I want to see the acquisition date. So let's take uh, 90001 as an example for throughout the video as a reference. So I can say acquisition date is 2019, November 14, 2019. And if I go to depreciation details, I can see service life is five. My depreciation period is 60, whereas the remaining period is just 15. And placed in service date is November 14, 2019. That is when it's acquired and that is when the depreciation started. So this details is key during the book update. So once this is update, the next step is to do fixed assets acquisition transaction. So to update fixed assets transaction, I will be using fixed assets journal entity. So let's go to fixed assets journal to post acquisition transaction. So now when I'm posting fixed assets acquisition, so I would have already collected all the data. So here I have account display value, which is fixed assets. Then I have the amount, acquisition amount, the original price to acquire. Then we have the uh, just the general upload template that I have here. Uh, transaction type acquisition, transaction date. So if you see here, I am not posting or I am not selecting acquisition date here. I am posting transaction as on May 31st and that is the date I have given for all the transaction that I am posting. So before I have save this, let's update the general batch number and the voucher number. So generally what approach I take for this is uh, to post the acquisition transaction. Let me go to system. So let's say before posting transaction, I will go to fixed assets, journal entries, fixed assets journal. So click new. So I would take this journal number the journal name data I've already taken. So let's say journal num batch number. So let me take this and update here in the transaction. So this is the journal batch number. 
and similarly if I need voucher number so I would go inside lines I will pick the first number so it continues from there on a sequential basis let's expand this so you can see voucher number I will give an opening balance FA so it will be easy to identify so let's take that number here so let's put that number here so that's the voucher number which I have updated so once the file is ready let's save close this now let's import the acquisition transaction so go to data management so let me go back here click new so your FA acquisition now add file okay FA acquisition name already exists or I think it's the space so entity name fix assets journal so let me select that so fixed assets journal that's the one I'm selecting upload and add here transaction fixed assets journal this is to post acquisition select that once the line is added select this and click import now so it's imported now let's go to fixed assets journal so this is a fixed assets journal which I created so let's go inside the lines so now I can see all the transactions have been imported so you can see date so I am posting as on May 31st so, so I've included the fixed assets the debit amount which is the acquisition amount also the account I am taking a dummy account 9998 which is what I have taken so once you import now let's validate and post the transaction so let me simulate posting so once the simulation is successful now the transaction is ready to be posted now here's a key uh, so if you remember our next step after acquisition I have mentioned step 4 as book update so why is this because if I go to fixed assets currently so you can see acquisition date is 2019 right I've taken this as an example now once a transaction is posted the acquisition date will be changed to May 31st because I am posting the transaction as a May 31st but once the transaction is posted I will update the books again which in turn will change my acquisition date back to 2019 so in this way I can avoid creating calendar let's say if I have fixed assets from 2000 I don't need to go and create calendar from 2000 I can create a current year but in this way I can still get the acquisition date in place so let's go ahead and post the acquisition transaction so click post so the number of journals posted 94 now if I come back refresh here so you can see the date is changed to May 31st 2024 uh, I think the screen is refreshing so let's just give it time so, yeah it's back so now if I go to books here so you can see uh, the acquisition is date is back to May 31st 2024 and so my placed in service date also is updated but my depreciation period remaining period is properly there so for me I need to change acquisition date placed in service so these are the two important areas I need to change and that is why my next step is to re-update books which is already updated so in that way I will change the acquisition date and my placed in service date so if I go to transaction currently I will see one acquisition transaction so now let's go back so let's update the book again so let's go to data management let me go back here click new let's say FA book re-update I think I cannot give space so let me just give that now click add file entity name fixed assets book v2 if you remember that's what we used it so fixed assets book v2 now upload and add so select the file that we updated earlier so let me just go back fixed assets pilot so book update which I used earlier so I'm going to select the same file and let's re-import that and click import so when you're re-importing your fixed assets book probably you can remove the price because acquisition cost is already posted so let the same acquisition cost be there so you don't need to re-update the acquisition cost so you can remove that 
So here you can see it's updated 93 is updated 1. I think it could be because of you know some data. So let's ignore that. So now once it's re-imported, now let me go back here. So you can see the acquisition uh, date is 2024. Let's refresh this. So once I refresh, now you can see acquisition date is back to 2019 and also placed in service date is back to 2019. In this way, original acquisition date is in place, placed in service in place, depreciation period is in place, remaining is in place. Now acquisition is also completed. Acquisition price is also in place. Now the only thing is remaining is to post depreciation. So that also I'll be posting using fixed assets journal and the file in the depreciation profile or in the depreciation journal. Again, I would need journal batch number. So I would need journal batch number, but more importantly, a value, I would need a credit amount. Then I also need to update my offset account value here. So this is again, uh, I will be taking the same 99 account. So let me quickly take that account here. The one that I use the acquisition. So same account I'll be using to post my depreciation as well, accumulated depreciation. So let me update that number here. So this is the account that I'm using to post my de accumulated depreciation offset account. So if I come back here, so I would need general batch number. So let's go to system. So the transaction which is already posted, click new. So I will get a new general batch number, which I will use it here in my depreciation. So that's the general batch number. So I have line number, account display value. Then the depreciation amount, credit amount, that's important. So journal name, offset account, and transaction date. Again, I'm posting as on May 31st. So I'm posting accumulated depreciation. So I don't need to post each depreciation. I will have accumulated depreciation value. And I'm posting as on May 31st. So we would need voucher number. So let me get the voucher number. So select the journal name. Go to lines. Let me pick the voucher number. So let me just quickly copy the voucher number go here. So let me drag the voucher number for all the lines. Okay. Sorry. I think I should take the next number. Okay. So once the voucher number is updated, now let's import this particular file as well. So let me save, close. So go to system. <coughs> So let's import the fixed assets depreciation transaction. So click new. So I need FA depreciation. Let me add file. I'm going to use the same entity fixed assets journal. Fixed asset journal. Then upload and add. So the last file that I need to upload. So I closed. Yep, it's closed. So it will be depreciation. Once the line is added, let's select that, click import now. So the data is imported. So you can see 83, that's because few fixed assets doesn't have any depreciation. So now let's go to fixed assets journal, which I created. So let's go inside. So now you can see all the depreciation line is here with the depreciation amount and the offset account being updated. So you can see the date, it will be May 31st. Now let's click post. So let's post the transaction. So fixed assets depreciation is posted. Now let's go back to this refresh here. So after fixed assets acquisition posted, now just click balance here. So I can see the original acquisition price. I can see the depreciation. I can see net book value. And key is I can see acquisition date, the original acquisition date. I can see placed in service date. I can see depreciation remaining periods and both the transaction is posted as of May 31st. So I can go to trial balance just on May 31st to see what are the acquisition or what are the opening balance being posted in terms of values. So this is how we do fixed assets migration from legacy system to new system in D365. That's it for today's video. Thanks everyone.